Lost in Space is noted as the first feature film to utilize 3D Studio Max for visual effects shots. From that point through the early 2000s, dozens of major movies leveraged 3D Studio Max in some capacity. For example, The Matrix Reloaded in 2003 used Max's built-in physics plugin to simulate the iconic scene where Neo slaps multiple agents to the ground, like ragdolls. Many other blockbuster titles of that era had some 3DS Max footprint including Harry Potter movies, X-Men movies, Spider-Man 3, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, 300, The Blade Trinity, The Day After Tomorrow, and The Matrix movies. This actually reflects that at its peak, 3DS Max was indeed employed in a wide range of VFX and animation projects. And studios like Blur further demonstrated 3DS Max's capability. Blur Studio is a company known for high-end game cinematics and animated shorts and it built its pipeline around Max for years. And to some capacity, Max is still used in the VFX industry, even by big studios. But it is not as it was in the past, and it is being replaced by other software to a certain extent. So how did that happen in the first place? Despite its early contributions, Max, gradually over the years, fell out of favor in Hollywood VFX pipelines, not completely. But this happened due to several interrelated factors. A fundamental limitation that does not come to mind right away was that Max only runs on Windows. In contrast, Maya and Houdini are available on Linux, which became the dominant operating systems in large VFX houses for its stability, but most importantly, for its ease of deployment on render farms. Studios like ILM, Wara, Double Negative, and others built Linux-based pipelines, so a Windows-only tool was a poor fit for their rendering needs. As an industry veteran bluntly noted, for Macs to seriously compete in VFX workflows, they should first release a Linux version. But Autodesk never did, which made Maya a more natural choice for both Unix and Linux pipeline integration. This cross-platform Maya could be easily scripted on Linux servers and used by artists or Linux workflows and workstations, whereas adopting Macs would force a studio to maintain Windows infrastructure just for that tool. This operating system incompatibility greatly hindered Max's penetration into large VFX studios, especially those who want to render directly using Macs. In addition to this, large VFX productions rely on highly customizable pipelines with proprietary tools, automated workflows, and extensive scripting to manage assets and scenes. You see, Maya's architecture proved more suitable for these needs because it has a robust node-based scene graph and it was designed from the ground up with customizability in mind. Studios could write ML scripts and later Python scripts to deeply integrate Maya with their pipelines and automate tasks. By comparison, 3ds Max's integration is less flexible. Early on, it relied on a Windows-centric API and its own Max script language, making it harder to unify with Python-based pipeline tools. On the other hand, Maya's openness allowed things like Per Studio tools, custom deformers, and pipeline hooks to flourish, whereas Max developed a reputation as a more self-contained 3D software even though it has a lot of VFX plugins, like FumeFX, Krakatoa, Rayfire, Phoenix FD, Thinking Particles, and many, many other great plugins. But for customizability and making tools on the fly, Maya kinda had the upper hand. In practice, this meant many effect houses had existing pipeline code and asset management built around Maya, so sticking with those was easier. But personally, I don't think this is a key reason why 3ds Max fell behind in the VFX industry. I would say it is just a catalyst. The next point, however, is a direct reason behind why Max is lagging behind. The feature sets of other 3D software increasingly surpassed Max when it comes to complex character animation and VFX simulations seen in modern films. One can't help it but think that Autodesk did it on purpose. Maya became the industry standard for character rigging and animation in feature films. 
because it has powerful rigging tools, animation layers, and amazing tools for cloth, simulation, and fluids. Studios found Maya better suited for hero character work and sophisticated animation rigs, whereas Max's character tools, for example Character Studio and later Cat, were somewhat less advanced and less widely adopted in film when it comes to character animation pipelines, especially in the last decade, not because they are not good, but because they were left behind in terms of development. And if you want the real answers, ask Onodesk, I guess. On the other hand, they pumped Maya with amazing simulation and effects tools like Bifrost, Bullet Physics, MASH, Viewpoint 2.0, and hair and cloth improvements, and many other things. Whereas when it came to Max, improvements were only symbolic. That is, until the last five years, we are seeing a roadmap for improvements. For visual effects simulations, Houdini emerged as the go-to solution thanks to its fully procedural, node-based approach to particles, fluids, and destruction. In comparison, Max relied on third-party plugins, like Thinking Particles, FumeFX, or Rayfire, or the built-in particle flow system. While Max could achieve similar effects with plugins, Studio often preferred having Houdini out-of-the-box power and dedicated research and development from side effects for large-scale simulations. So overall, Maya and Houdini offered more specialized, film-focused capabilities compared to Max, which couldn't match that without using add-ons or plugins. And over time, this made Maya and Houdini a more future-proof combo, especially for high-end productions. In Hollywood, software choices can become self-reinforcing. As Maya took hold as the de facto film 3D package in the 2000s, more artists trained on Maya, and studios hiring new talent found a larger pool of Maya proficient candidates. One VFX supervisor from a studio that moved away from Max noted that management felt like it was easier to hire Maya artists, especially for animation, which accelerated their switch from a Max-based pipeline to Maya. In contrast, Max's user base concentrated in other industries, like game development and visualization, rather than film, meaning that fewer junior VFX artists learned Maya in school or as a primary skill. Studios also prefer not to split their workflow across too many 3D software, because it is simpler to standardize one or two. So by the mid-2010s, the vast majority of FX houses standardized on Maya for 3D animation, often alongside Houdini for FX, making Max an outlier to a certain extent. Even Autodesk's own marketing strategy started reflecting this divide. As I said before, Maya is explicitly advertised as a tool for film, TV, and games, where Max is pitched for games and design visualization. This positioning by Autodesk themselves, I think reinforced the notion that Maya belonged in feature film pipelines, while Max was suited for other markets. A contributing factor why Max is lagging behind in the VFX industry was Autodesk's acquisition of Maya in 2005 and later Softimage in 2008. You see, owning multiple overlapping 3D packages, Autodesk started to promote Maya for high-end film and TV work and Max for other segments to avoid cannibalization. But the fate of Softimage was different, they got rid of it. Back then, some people in the community even speculated that Autodesk might gradually soft image Max, aka discontinue it, given Maya's dominance in media and entertainment. While Max was not discontinued, thanks to its larger user base in other fields, Onodesk's development focused on cutting edge and important VFX features for Maya, such as Bifrost, advanced animation tools, and so on, like we said before. And over time, this left Max with fewer native high end features, I mean for VFX work in addition to a perception of stagnation, prompting many film studios to migrate to other software. And here is a fun fact. Autodesk split Max into separate editions in 2008, one tailored to design and architecture, and the other to media. And people were just confused. This further signaled that a huge portion of Max's users were based outside of VFX and film. And they later merged the editions back, but the effect was already felt. By around 2020, the cumulative effect of these factors was clear. 
Max was lagging behind in VFX to a certain extent. And a VFX artist veteran survey in 2018 observed that only a handful of studios, notably Skyline, Blur, and Pixelmundo, in addition to a few others, still used Max as a primary 3D package. I mean the dominant one. But the others focused on Maya and Houdini for the most part. And some artists and supervisors noticed that studios that once had hybrid Max and Maya pipelines eventually converged fully to a Maya and Houdini pipeline especially as they extended or merged with other companies. So over time, as the decades went by, Max started lagging behind in VFX gradually. But in other industries like visualization and game development, it is a completely different story. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.